Hi everyone, welcome back to Coffee with Kim and Hills. We're starting off a new week. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> it's Monday. It is. Cheers Monday. to coffee. Cheers <laughs> to a big cup of coffee. <laughs> and six more to come, I'm mm -hmm. sure. So did you have a good weekend? I did. It was a really nice weekend. Um, my sister was still visiting, so we just kind of hung out and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was just really mellow. Chill. Which was great. Yeah. Nice chill weekend. Nice chill weekend. Definitely needed that. Mine was not as chill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my little one got, this is her third fever since she's been born. Mm. I hope this doesn't make me sound like a bad mom. I don't know what's going on because the kid never leaves the house, right. really. I mean, she was a COVID baby and... I'm not a doctor, I don't know, <laughs> but my theory is that she just hasn't been exposed to much. So yeah. when we do go to the store or something, mm -hmm. her body's like, what is all of this? Right. And then fever. But it was like three days of oh. high fever and I, we started getting a little bit nervous. We took her to the pediatrician and they you know, checked for everything. They checked for COVID, they checked for the flu, they checked for ear infection, bladder infection, ruling everything out and they said, okay, well, if you get to day four and she still has a high temperature, you need to, you know, go to the hospital. And so we were just like, it was hard to sleep. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. Please. Right. So, but her temperature is down now and she's okay. acting more like herself, That's a subdued good. version, which actually is kind of nuts. <laughs> but yes, it was like, whew, it's hard to sleep when your baby's sick. You're just yes. constantly waking up and checking the monitor and mm -hmm. like, you okay in there? You right. okay in there? But we made it, we made it through. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that she's feeling better. She is oh. feeling better. And I know that fevers, I talked to like, you know, other moms are like, it's yeah. just part of it. They get fevers, you know, it's. Well, it's their way of fighting off an infection, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And adults don't get fevers as much, but they hurt us a lot more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I got a really bad fever like 10 years ago and I literally. <laughs> that you remember. That I remember. It was like 102. <laughs> For no reason, yeah. I mean, whatever, I had a flu or something like that. And yeah. literally, I had no roommates at home. And I literally almost had my parents come pick like, me Mom. up <laughs> because I was living like, you know, 45 minutes away and yeah. I was in such pain. Oh, God. I was like, I just want my mom. It is it is a funny thing when you get yeah. sick like that to yeah. that degree, which is a little more rare as you get older. I think when totally. you're a kid, it happens more often. It but happens yeah. all the time you're just with like, kids. <laughs> We're just with my mom and take care of me. Now I can't do that because I live on the other side of the country. Yeah. But, <laughs> but when my daughter gets a fever, mm -hmm. like obviously I'm concerned and, you know, make sure that there's nothing too crazy. And especially right. when it's prolonged, like for three days, like that's a long time. Yeah. But it's basically just their way of like fighting anything off. I know. They're just these bitty little yeah. delicate things. Oh, and no. you're like, oh, no, no, no. And they can't like... communicate. Right. And you're like... Are you in pain? What is happening? And she's teething on top of it. So Ooh. her second top tooth is pushing through. And I'm like, this poor kid can't catch a break. <laughs> Never any fun. Never any fun. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> enough of that. Now we're going to get to um, our hot topics with our hot coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're going to start with um, an article from the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. um, how to cope with the rising cost of digital subscriptions from Netflix and Amazon Prime. Du, du, du. Everything's going up. Everything's going up. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, like from the pandemic, everyone ended up signing up for every single streaming platform yes. there is because we, we couldn't go anywhere. So we were like, this is our form of entertainment. You know what I mean? Right. Or especially when um, we were like at home and both... My husband and I were working full time yeah. and we had a toddler. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. We got Disney plus because we needed something for our child to watch while we were both in meetings at the same time. Cause oh there gosh. were times when we all did that. <laughs> not well, not well, but you know, and we also, we aren't super intense on the screen time. She doesn't get it all the time, mm -hmm. but Man, Disney Plus has been a lifesaver um, yes. in that respect. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, Tam and I love Disney Plus 
right. ourselves. Right. We I got mean, it before <laughs> our kid was born. <laughs> and yes, we'll sit and watch the Jungle Book together. <laughs> I mean, there's some really great gems on there. There really is. There really is. Right? But yeah, so everything seems to be going up. Spotify, Disney, and Sling TV have all mm -hmm. raised their prices within this past year. Netflix. Um, I love how the article um, brought up how people borrow other people's yes. Netflix, which is, I feel like I am the hub of like <laughs> five different families' Netflix. I don't know how I became, you know, the person that is supplying Netflix right. for all these people. And when are they going to catch on Netflix? I hope they're not watching this. Yeah, right. <laughs> But this article kind of gives some tips as to what you can do to help ease the pain of some of these price hikes. Yeah, because they are significant for, like, if you look at it, yes, it feels like Netflix went up a dollar or two depending on your um, package. But yeah, if you look at them individually, month, but then if you look like at it lot. throughout the year, yeah. it is like could be 20 bucks, right? 24 bucks for the higher end package. And then tack on every other streaming platform exactly. that you have on top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My parents went through and they had done this exercise where they went through all their subscriptions. They were Good spending job. over $400 a month on subscriptions. Oh my gosh. And I was like, wow, why? Amazing. Why? <laughs> That's a, so they they had they did the analysis of the ones that they use and ones that they don't. Got rid of the ones that they, they don't. Could save up for a nice vacay with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. Um, well, this article talks about that, like looking at um, that even the apps that you have in your phone mm -hmm. that I feel like are. I mean, they're so user friendly. Like if there's something that you need to do, I'm mm -hmm. I'm bad with this. Or get done. You can find an app for literally anything, yes. and you can do. Oh, it's you know, um, you know, sign up for this, but you can cancel within a week, mm -hmm. and you'll do it, and you'll be like, yeah, I'll just I'll, I'll cancel within a week, and then you forget. Right. Um, so this article yes. says, just if you're going to do that, you know, if you need to write it down, set a reminder to cancel <laughs> straight away. Yes. <laughs> Make sure you cancel straight Make away. Make sure you cancel within the time period that you need to. Yes. This happened with when the pandemic first started, and my husband and I were just home. Yeah. And like. All of our jobs, like we, all of our jobs, <laughs> our jobs were on hold because our, the theater industry had completely shut down. Right. We were like, let's take this time to look at our finances and see where we can save. There you go. And he knew to come, he came right at me and he was like, let's look at all the apps in your phone. And I was like, huh? And oh man, I was guilty. I had these apps going that I don't even use. It was like a scan app that I used to scan ah. something that I needed scanned, and I never like, you know, ended up never canceled it. I never canceled it. I mean, and I ended up saving like yeah. a decent amount of money just going through and cleaning house. Yeah, like I think it's definitely a good root trick to like do once a year to mm -hmm. like just make sure that you haven't don't have these hidden ones that you wouldn't remember. Like everybody remembers their Netflix. You remember if you have a, if you're a prime right, member, right. like, but yeah, these apps that might be like $2 a month or something like right. that. I like their tip as well. Um, for the streaming platforms saying a lot of people want to, um, sign up for this subscription because it's cheaper monthly, mm -hmm. but they recommended maybe signing up for a month to month because then you can reevaluate is this something that i really need that i really want am i really watching right you know this platform as much as i am the other platforms and right. i thought that's clever right like signing up for showtime so that you can watch billions that one and then show <laughs> cancel it after it's over I'm not gonna Guilty. say i've done that <laughs> but i've done that but yeah i mean like we actually it's one of the things that we do we wait until the entire season has wrapped up yeah. and then we go in for a month or two, sometimes it's two, and yeah. then cancel right after we're done watching yeah. the entire thing. But that way we can be caught up. See, that's, you're doing well. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. And then we just have Disney Plus all the time because we need it. But you have, you have, a, you have a little girl. I mean. Yeah. But it's interesting. So Amazon Prime also went up signif kind of significantly this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do I actually really need it? I don't use it as much as I used to because yeah. I'm trying to make a more conscious effort to shop within a store or shop locally. Right. But I'm also, it's so addicting guys. Like it's hard to it's, say no to prime. It's so easy. It's so easy. It is so easy. I know I've been planning for my daughter's first birthday and mm. everything. Yep. Is coming from prime. Yeah, it is. Because when I have a, a second, you know what I mean? If right. you're on the train, if you're, 
if you're just, you know, if she's taking a nap, I can just do, 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 you know, and there mm -hmm. it is at the house the next day. Yep. I know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard, but it's something, it's food for thought because these prices are going up and, uh, yeah, I mean, they're going up everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of look at every single level. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Anyway, we are going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back with more hot topics and hot coffee. See you in a sec. Welcome back for more hot topics. Um, all right. So there's an article from Business Insider titled for smart money habits of millennials, their parents wouldn't recognize according to a financial planner who knows. Yep. I didn't write down the name of the financial planner who knows. Did you write down the name of the financial planner? I did not. Did not okay. Well, there is a financial planner and they know. They know. They work <laughs> with people. I thought, I mean, it, very interesting because millennials kind of get a bad rap for spending too much on our avocado toasts and our oat milk lattes and mm -hmm. all the, they are expensive. Yeah. Um, but I think we've also kind of grown up as professionals in this time period where the great recession yep. of 20, 2008, um, we're now in another pandemic that has, there's been an econo another mm -hmm. economic recession. So we haven't had these chances that boomers had, which was just kind of economic growth for so long. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there were some things, don't get me wrong, like the 70s, 80s, et cetera. But for the most part, they've had a really great run mm -hmm. when it comes to gaining wealth and prosperity um, as a generation. Right. But I think that millennials just treat money differently. Yeah. Um, and so it was really interesting to kind of say... Hooray for my generation. I know. Well, <laughs> so the article um, says that millennials are more likely to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And um, that probably also come like is because of the fact that, you know, they, uh, many millennials, I know I did and you did probably mm -hmm. as well. That we literally kind of entered the workforce when the recession hit. Yep. Um, so it was kind of like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you had you had to learn how to ask for help, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yes. And because it was such a crazy time. And I think one of the other things that they also pointed out in the article that millennials ha are more likely to have an emergency fund because of starting their careers during the recession yeah. than other generations. And I think that that's definitely true because mm -hmm. we started with this instability mm -hmm. and don't want to go back there. Yeah. I don't want to go back. No, nobody wants to go back. Yeah. But I think, yeah, there is a thick skin that millennials have developed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is, is, has attributed towards them becoming entrepreneurs themselves yep. and wanting more within their workplace. The article pointed out that millennials are more likely to demand better pay benefits and treatment from employers. Mm -hmm. So they want purpose in their work, which is why there have been so many that want to become entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and why one of the reasons why the great resignation has happened during this pandemic, because yes. people are like, this is not what I want to be doing with my life. And I spend so much of my life mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. that I want to have it be purposeful. Yep. So I'm going to start my own business. Totally. I saw it massively during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Most of my peers are millennials. I'm a millennial myself <laughs> and I watched so many, I mean, so many of them are in the performing arts industry, um, mm -hmm. on Broadway. And because it was shut down, I mean, everyone hustled. They were like, I'm not shutting down. I'll just create my own business instead. I mean, so many of them. Yeah. I, I don't know many that kind of sat back, you know, and just waited. I mean, most people really, you know, fought to stay afloat and take matters into their own hands. And so I thought that was, it was kind of, it was inspiring to see. It was, so I'm proud. Yes. I'm proud you. to be a millennial and proud of millennials. Cause sometimes, you know, the Gen Z's aren't very nice to us. It's true. <laughs> Neither are the boomers. Yeah. Cause they're our parents. Exactly. <laughs> uh, one of the other things that I really liked in this article that they mentioned is that, um, millennial couples are more likely to um, 
talk openly about money. So they yeah. have open communication about money, right. about financial goals, mm -hmm. about what they want to be doing. They've talked about it. Whereas in previous generations, it was either a one-sided conversation right. or maybe you didn't even have a conversation until you were already married or further in down the line. Yeah. But because there's a lot more... Um, partnerships going into marriage these mm -hmm. days with millennials where both are high earners or similar earning mm -hmm. levels. There's just a lot more conversation happening about like, where do we want to get to? What is our next level? Like yeah. money isn't as taboo of a topic for our generation, which I think is great. Yes. I think that millennials, you know, are the first generation, maybe a little bit Gen X. I'm not totally sure. Mm -hmm. I'm married to a Gen X. I think millennials. So <laughs> To just start talking, you know, breaking down the barriers of secrecy, you mm -hmm. know, and just being more transparent about really everything, everything. just how you yeah. feel, you right. know what I mean? Talk about feelings, like basic things like right. that. And I think then it also comes down to finances and just sharing responsibilities mm -hmm. and sharing opinions. And I think that's a really healthy shift in, you know, society mm -hmm. and how we're functioning as a whole. And I think to your point, there's a lot more transparency. People are talking about how much they earn, which will then hopefully equalize the pay gap, which is such right. a huge thing. Yes. Um, and having, and even just within the same roles, being able to have transparency about what other people are making at your own company, mm -hmm. I think is going to be super helpful mm -hmm. um, for generations to come. Yeah. Yep. So good job, millennials. Keep up the good work. Pat Keep talking about your money. Keep talking. Keep spreading the word. You're doing so great. All right. We're going to take another quick commercial break and we'll be right back. See you in a sec. Hello. Welcome back. I just wanted to remind you all not to forget to tune in to today's episodes of Your Money, Your Wealth, ETF Stories, and Life's Third Act. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Kevin Hills. We are so excited to see you tomorrow for another cup of coffee and some chats. You can find ROI TV on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, or on your phone via your iOS or Android app. See you there. Bye.